Hello, I'm Simon and welcome to the CyRob YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to go over the um, wheel speed sensor and ABS rings just to give you a little bit more information on it, just in case you've had problems with ABS or um, traction control, strange speedo readings, that kind of thing. But it's also something that even if you've not got a problem on your car, it's always handy to know that there are uh, you know a couple of uh, methods of investigating problems like this a little bit um, quicker so you're not guessing now this type of sensor which you've seen me um well not unplug from my car but uh, move out the way when i'm doing various bits of work on the suspension this is what's known as a hall type sensor and voltage is applied to the sensor and that creates um uh, a magnetic field and then the sensor's proximity to the ABS rings or rather either the peak toothed part of the ring or the troughs where you can see the gap there um, the proximity to the sensor then affects the um, magnetic field and the voltage and current that's then returned back to the brake control module and pre-programmed into the brake control module will be a given set of values that will then be interpreted as a speed so that you know the free the the voltage going back and the frequency as well as the current um the brake control module ca calculates the speed for each of the wheels you have a setup like this although on rear wheels um the the sensor normally plugs into like the rear hub assembly so it has the has the uh, the ring if you like built into the hub assembly but they they work on the same principle and as a result you can get an individual speed for each of each of the four wheels on the car and it's using that speed uh, so say for example if you were you know accelerating and uh, there were leaves at the side of the road the um, the wheels on the side of the leaves may travel at a slightly faster speed than the ones which have got full traction with the road and so your traction control system may make adjustments to um, either power delivery or just braking those wheels to um, so you don't have a you know a skid situation Likewise, if you under heavy braking, if the wheels start to lose traction and lock up, um, the the system would recognise that as a drop in that wheel's individual speed signal, and so it may release the brakes from that wheel in order to um, help you keep, retain control of the car and um, and not skid and slide and um, you know end up in a hedge. So, um, so this interruption of the of the magnetic field, you can actually view it um, just by doing something very very basic, which is um, tapping um, on the sensor itself using something that would be magnetic. So you know, a piece of steel, something like that. And with the engine off, but the ignition on in the car, you'll be able to see on the dash that how the speedo actually responds to the tapping on the um, on the ABS sensor or the wheel speed sensor and so uh, just from doing that very very basic thing you can uh, you can actually see if there's a link between the wheel sensor itself and um, you know the the car's computers and if that's being interpreted by uh, by the speedometer now it's not a very scientific way of doing things and I prefer to to have you know more accuracy with these kinds of things so with the diagnostics that i can use on my car i, I use the volvo diagnostic system vida what i can do here is um, call up the um, individual uh, speeds for each of the four wheels so you can just have it as a normal um, numerical value but much more useful is um, is the graphing function, where basically, as you drive along, the um, the wheel speed for each individual wheel plots its own uh, line on the graph. 
And really what you want to be seeing at all times is, um, is those line graphs overlapping each other almost all the time. And that means then that all four wheels are traveling at the same speed and it's not going to be causing any problems. There's no loss of traction or anything like that. But likewise, what you also want to see is you want to see instances where if traction is lost for any reason, the the system is recognising that and taking whatever precautions are necessary to rectify it. So as I'm um, just stopped at this position just here, you'll be able to see that uh, this is actually a hard right turn on quite a greasy road and I deliberately... Um, accelerated harder than I normally would with a full lock and you'll actually see for a brief moment that the the right um, wheel spins more than the rest of the wheels and um, and so it was losing traction but you'll then see very quickly afterwards and this is with traction control on by the way you'll then see very quickly afterwards how it's then brought into line and all four wheels then um, continue to show similar speeds and then on this example coming up basically what I did here this is just your classic wheel spin this is a, you know a, a hard away from the lights wheel spin this is where I've turned up the traction control off on my car so it then allows the wheel spin and there's no interruption and you'll notice here that there's a much larger spike with the front wheels front right and front left wheel they both go up at exactly the same time ahead of the rear wheels and when they're brought back into line that's just simply them regaining traction under under their own you know under normal physics there's no intervention by the electronic tra uh, traction control system so um so if we just have a look at that again you can see how it will be a front wheel spin, both wheels spinning at the same time, but noticeably faster. And then as they both gain traction, they come back into line and um, and all is well. And all the, the graph plots remain the same again. So um, so in summary, really, with um, with this, the, the point of this is really to show you that the there is more detailed information for you to be for you to have rather than just relying on an ABS warning like come up on the dash which really could be any number of things really you know you could have a problem with the wiring um, you could have an issue with the actual ring itself where um, the the ring has become corroded and the gaps between the um, you know the peaks and troughs are, are not uniform on one particular wheel and so it can be throwing out spurious figures there also you can have things like as I mentioned in a previous short video even things like the drive shaft bolt not being um, secure and what that can allow is it can allow lateral movement of the drive shaft in and out of the hub and that affects the relative position of the ring to the sensor and so once again it's going to be producing an erroneous uh, signal going back which could then be interpreted as you know a, a loss of traction or or whatever on on that particular wheel so if you don't have this kind of equipment available to you and you do have to rely on a garage or whatever I would strongly recommend you know pointing this out to the garage and and asking them if they can um, you know just have a road test and, and bring up individual wheel speeds I would imagine that most garages worth their salt will have equipment that can you know read this kind of information and um, and it's it's just a much clearer way of seeing exactly what's going on with the wheel speeds and therefore the braking system on the car and um, and hopefully it will um, you know save money because you get a more accurate diagnosis there's nothing worse than a garage you're going in with an ABS fault or a wheel speed sensor fault and so they change the wheel speed sensor when it might not actually be that it might actually be you know a problem with the ring it might like say you know the drive shaft bolt being loose that kind of stuff so um, 
yeah, I thought I'd just throw this out there and um, hopefully you'll find it interesting and useful at some point in the future. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching.